so the first time I thought that, okay, I want to paint, I was copying from my father's fish book, these images of fish, and then I was able to do them like really well. And then I was like, oh my God, this is total happiness. I forgot what I was going to say. Good. <laughs> So hello to Anna Broms. We are today in your space. In Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're in Swamelina. Mm -hmm. And this is the second time I'm on an island, I have to say. Really? I was in Haraka once. Ah, I thought so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. And it's it's a very nice trip to go to yeah. an island. Yeah. 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 Um, so you live here and work here? Yes, I live here and I work here. And uh, at the moment my studio is in in our home or actually i think it's more like a studio with a home mm. so <laughs> kind of <laughs> i mean there are those uh, yeah from atelier sat your yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly like yes yeah, yes setup? yes yes but so. everything spreads around like things are put over there in the living room and yeah what do you do for a person who hasn't met you and doesn't know your art? Uh, well, I make... Um, uh, my language is painting. I've studied painting in free art school, which is a uh, um, color painting school for four years. And then later on I studied um, at the uni arts. Um, in painting department since I mean since 2018 I've been approaching painting from more of an environmental point of view like kind of trying to save the material recycle the material not to get get uh, too poisoned with the material and uh, yes yes so I paint and I make this kind of I used to make uh, kind of a, like regular paintings but now they are like more like a expanded painting that they become installations and uh, and then I make moving images underwater filming and some kind of sound stuff to come more of a noise like experimenting and uh, yeah that's what I do and then I write like kind of poetry kind of stuff that's what i do quite wide <laughs> wide variety yes, of things yes. you do that's nice mm -hmm. um, we are going to see a bit later probably some of your works mm -hmm. uh, because they're interesting and people should see them i think um but yeah before that maybe to bring you back a little bit mm -hmm. from your beginnings very beginning. Very beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you become an artist in the first place? Mm. I was what did you do as a kid? Mm. As like a kid, I was swimming, swimming and drawing. Swimming and drawing. And eating tomato salad. Mm. Very <laughs> yes, that's like, like oh yeah. And uh, in the in uh, I was like in the woods and I was making uh, this kind of streams, playing with small small. Um, like in the springtime when the when the snow is uh, melting, mm -hmm. then there is this kind of you start you can make this kind of streams uh -huh. with water and so I was playing a lot with the uh, with the co tiny cars and I was drawing and then what my mother rem always reminds me of that I was always changing the place of furniture in my room. Or painting the walls. I was always organizing. That is so interesting. Yeah. You know, when when I was a kid, my mom would do that. Yeah. She would always want to change the position of everything yeah. in the yeah. room. I hate it. You hate it. Yeah. You, because I always needed yeah. to help with, yeah. with moving the stuff. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, now I'm sometimes having these moments of, oh, I need to change things. Yeah. yeah. I do it quite much. But very often it it happens to me like, for example, when putting a studio, because all the time I'm like, you know, changing places in the studio. I was in here for here here for one year, and now I'm here. So 
I kind of go to a space and find the most uncon unconventional way of putting it. And then I look at it, and this doesn't work. I mean, this is not practical. And then, okay, we'll put this. <laughs> this like really regularly. And then I'm like, oh my God, what a piece of peace of mind, like when things are like set out. <laughs> but <laughs> it is refreshing. I think it, it's mm. very refreshing when you move yeah. stuff around and then there's a new setup. And like, oh, yeah, oh, okay. yeah. It's yeah. like sort of a new beginning. I mean, mm. It's a bit like cleaning. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm. But it's more interesting than cleaning. Yes, very much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then uh, so from the little streams you were making, like kind of in yeah, the, it's hard to like like when the snow melts. Yeah, I can imagine. Oh, yeah, I mean, I don't, and then there is yeah, like uh, then there is sand, and then the water runs in the mm. water runs in the sand, and then I enjoyed very much making these streams. And uh, it's reminding uh, me of a Zen garden type of thing. <laughs> Mm, true, could be, but it was not that controlled though. It, yeah, or, yeah, or, you don't or have maybe, so much. yeah. Uh, and, uh, and how did you, did you go to an art school from like a high school already, or was it later? Definitely? Yeah, I went, uh, I went to art high school in Savonlinna. There is like a, um, what is it called? Um, art high school of music and arts, Savonlinna. Mm. I don't know the proper name in English. And, um, I went there and uh, and later later I wanted to I, I wasn't uh, I really wanted to become an artist already but I didn't have the guts and I was worried about the income mm. like how to survive as an artist and uh, and then I went to study in Paris for a makeup artist so I was working in fashion for oh. for 5 years Wow! Yes. Yeah, yeah. A freelancer and a lot of money. <laughs> but that's um, a nice plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it wasn't that fulfilling, and um, of course, it, it was nice. And what then? Yeah. Then uh, later on, uh, I uh, I. Then you came back to Finland, did you? Or yeah, I was traveling a lot uh, abroad, and uh, and then I came back. To Finland, and then I studied um, Bachelor of Business Administration in <laughs> in North Finland, and uh, then um, then I started studying uh, uh, like adult um, how do you say in these adult studies, like um, ah yes, I um, I think. I mean, I don't know how it is in other countries. In Bulgaria, we don't yeah. have that. Yeah, yeah. So it's for me, it's a very finished yeah, thing. Yeah, like where, so, where yeah. Where you just take courses as an adult. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I, uh, and then we uh, we were living in Tampere then, and then then I moved to then we moved to Helsinki, and then I applied for free art school, and then uh, for after free art school, I was three years independent artist, and then then I applied for um, uni arts. Like how does the business administration fit into all of this? I can see the makeup, mm. how it is connected <coughs> to something mm. creative. Mm. But it gives structure. I wouldn't know how to use the computer if I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but mm. what made you go there? Uh, I didn't know yet what to do. And then, of course, the fact that I had children, I, I wanted to have something. Like, uh -huh, you had kids. That's yeah, right. yeah. How old are they now? Uh, the, uh, the oldest is 27 and the youngest is 70. Wow. Yeah. Mm. That's also pretty brave as an artist to have children, mm. I have mm. found. That's yes, yes. But yeah, I wanted to be an artist and I wanted to be a mother. So... Yeah, which probably other... shouldn't be in this kind of a situation. Yeah, you know, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Yes, like one of my favorite being... artists, Philida Barlow. She had how many kids? Do you know Philida Barlow? She's a sculptor. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I mean, she sure. just. I mean, recently she died. I mean, um, she had five children. Five. Goodness. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, I have three, and yeah, it's a. Three is already goodness in itself. Three is goodness. <laughs> and they are so precious. They are mine. Oh, wow. Yeah. Were you already an artist when you had the kids? Or 
were you still no it was before that mm. or when did you start seeing yourself as an artist uh when i graduated from free art school so it was before Two, that. yeah yeah after that after 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 having all my children uh -huh. but i was all the time doing i mean making art and taking courses and doing with my hands and uh yeah experimenting already then and then then in the academy you said you studied as well mm -hmm. was it a, like a master's degree or was it bachelor master's master's, yes. master's in painting yes, it was just um, and due to covid it took three years but not, normally it would have been two years but not many people do it in two years i mean i it's went to so alto and i did it in four years the master's degree. yes uh, yeah yeah i think it it's a pity and that it's made so short and and it was considered somewhat normal to do it for yeah, four years, yeah, yeah. which is like mm. quite a lot of time. Mm. But of course, it's no, good. To, yeah, for it feels better. good. Yeah, I think it's better. Yeah, because learning takes time, and it should be given time. Yeah, and and then you go there and you see how many possibilities you have. Yeah, and it's difficult to focus on something if mm. you don't have some mm. like a grand mm. vision of yeah of how your art should yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Do you have some other artists in your family? Or? Mm, my father was very... <clears throat> he was very uh, uh, into like aesthetics and he enjoyed everything beautiful and, and loved to do things with his hands. And I think it's part of, part of the time spent with him that I became an artist because we were like... like making uh, floors together and painting stuff and he was always so excited you know to do things together and my mom um she's um she she studied uh piano playing seriously so but she became an english and german uh lecturer i mean teacher in but there was school. definitely this uh, yeah, side of uh, appreciation, at least. Yeah, for appreciation, the arts. but but also they both studied very conventional. Yeah, it's been a risky business, and it is. But but it's it's something that I love. Mm. Yes, mm. and of course everything mm. could be a risky business. Yeah, yeah. In the end, yeah, it's important to be happy with your life and yeah, how, exactly. how it goes. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Just just being. Having an, I, I spoke with somebody yesterday about this. Uh, the the person who works in in corporate environment and how mm -hmm. she sees that it's full of people who just go to work for the money and mm. it's like mm. this is a huge part of your life. Mm. And then you are this like you don't like your work. Yeah, basically you don't like your waking life. Yeah, yeah. And you sleep eight hours and then eight hours. Yeah. Doing something that you don't like. It's it shouldn't be like that. Yeah, it shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. So I feel really lucky. And what are you, are you working on something at the moment? I will have a, a private exhibition or a, an a event in uh, Lapinlahti in the Venezia building in July. And uh, I'm working on that. What's a private exhibition? Like no private, sorry, solo exhibition. Uh -huh. Like not a group. That was a okay, okay, first, yeah, yeah. R a wrong, wrong expression. Yes. In July, okay. In July, yeah. Oh damn it! I'm not gonna be here in July. Mm. It would be nice to see. Wait, when mm. does it open? Uh, third of third uh, of uh, July will be an opening event. Okay, there's still quite a lot of time until then. But yeah. 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 It's, it would be nice to see. Mm. Maybe you can come and see the building. I mean, how I do it because uh, it's a space that I can use so that the things can need to be maybe taken away every now and then because it's in use also the space. It's this kind of uh, they rent it, rent it to events, but I can use it still. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because I my things are. Nomadic, my sculptures are made for to be, you know, like my works are can be moved and 
Yeah, I, I saw on your website this uh, nomadic art mm. thing I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Uh, what is nomadic art? Uh, I think um, I think for me nomadic art is the, is is changing and I mean changing of place of of state of mental state of of not being uh, kind of put to some certain frames hmm this is a difficult uh, but uh, most of all it's um, it's maybe 2019 when I started my studies uh, I left the in, 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 in painting I left the stretchers so I kind of started making paintings without stretchers mm -hmm. like using the canvas as yeah, if like it's a sheet it's, of paper it's, a, it's like this mm -hmm. so it's moving and it's it can go to any kind of space and uh, but is it changing over time as well or, or yes it, yes yeah. exactly yeah, sorry i hard to explain yeah i can i i some uh, i let the environment work on the works so i kind of when i say that i work with your mind with your my environment it doesn't mean that i describe it or i just let things happen to them and then see what happens and then i maybe continue them and and uh uh, it's like um, I think about the I work on this kind of uh, cotton batiste and um, and I think about it as a skin I work with it so that when I, when I take it outside it becomes it has this skin kind of um, qualities like it can get wrinkled it gets wet it gets frozen and, and because of certain materials, uh, I can bring it back to life. So it kind of stretches and then it becomes even. And Do you like to uh, exhibit your art outside or do you use this only during the process of making it? Mm, I do. I, I exhibit outside most of the time. Uh -huh. But of course, yeah. I mean, recently I've been doing things outside except for the uni arts thing but uh, there was also works that were underground for two years we're looking for, at um, work I mean part of the work which is not finished yet it has been outdoors for two years and the air made this it's a painting a striped painting so you can hardly see it anymore but it's it's done with air just air and um, the form comes from from um, this kind of uh, mm, swing, you know, old swing in a in a yard. These ones were outdoors. You can find it in on my Insta page. You can find a video. They were outdoors. I mean, for different periods of time, and I can always like they get all wrinkled and like frozen, and then I can always work them back because of the materials and if you want you can touch them and they have this kind of a bit of a skin feeling and then also a smell of outdoors this one this is a painting that was under underground in uh, was uh, in Posari um, no Aurinkolati some, somewhere there, I mean underground anyway like for in a nature area and the pills are pigments and they are inside uh, inside a gelatin capsule and i've been using gelatin as a as base glue but later i changed to agar agar and this one is this one was so they have been outside behind our sauna and i think about them as old man's trousers that's a very old old painting of mine from the free art school time on the left i have kept this for four years in on King's Island, this ribbon. So nice chairs. <laughs> old house. Old we, chairs. we are in a very old house, <laughs> yes. so some sounds are just inevitable. Yes. <laughs> the chairs are not from the 18th century. <laughs> At least not. Might mm. as well. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, anyway, so what are the main themes in your work? Understanding living, maybe, yeah. Yeah, understanding living, understanding life, how to be in this world. Uh, and then also, yes, the, where, yeah. Mm, like 2018, I started to make this environmentally friendly works. And at the same time, I mm, started thinking and reading Marco Rovelli and I, th I think he has a great co quote um, no it's uh, yeah it's his words he says that world is not a um, collection of uh, objects it's a, a collection of events so I, I th started th seeing things more porous and changing mm. and and at the same time my father died so I was like in this kind of uh, in two worlds in a, in a way like it was mm. like uh, I was expressing those things but in general I I think about light and uh, light and uh, colors in light like not maybe pigments even though I use pigments but I think about like uh, color of the sound, I get these synesthetic things. Mm. So uh, this, yeah, maybe it's about a, mm, like I'm trying to understand this world, and uh, and I somehow feel that I'm like looking for something that can't be seen mm. with my works. Yeah, when you say colors. Uh that's I'm, I'm generally struggling a little bit with colors mm -hmm. yeah because uh when you read how other living beings see colors it's very different than yeah. what we see yeah and what is colors after all you know because yeah. what we see say okay this is a blue color mm -hmm. then there comes some fly and it's gonna no 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 that is yeah. not blue yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah. Who defines what a color, what the color mm. is, and also even even within people, mm. some wouldn't really see it as yeah, true as you would, true, true. And what I like about colors is that, of course, I do like like really like drawing. I do that, but I like colors because they kind of spread. They are like connected, like with the air or with the light. They are like I see them more like. Mm. as uh, films in the air can you can you <laughs> like, like filters yeah exactly yeah, like filters yes huh. I haven't thought about them yeah. that way. I started seeing them when I was in free art school and when I like I kind of recognize it okay there is the color there actually is like I because we were like painting from perception mm. like we were supposed to paint what we saw so one starts to look like more like more carefully like what does one see actually like it's not it doesn't come through the words it comes through like you know like if you wouldn't know that like well isn't that generally what how people are painting uh it yeah it could be yeah it could be yes but the way of seeing it could be that i mean it's like the process of looking at things mm. like we often like look at things like this is a book but mm. if we didn't know that it, it's a book we would look at it differently mm. okay did you get it no somewhat um, <laughs> Maybe. so um, another example like mm, if you need to draw from perception at a hand and then I show you a hand, mm -hmm. and then you have to draw it from there. Yeah. What will you? If you think about the hand or the arm, you would probably start drawing it somehow long or something. But perception is like from like what you see, like without the words. This is how I mm. explained it to myself. Okay. Mm. Like kind of seeing things new. 
Okay. I'm confusing you. Yes and no. I mean, mm. I kind of understand it. Yeah. It's just maybe a little bit... Yeah, you put it in different words than my drawing teacher would have done. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm so sure. That, that's why I'm like, oh, mm. Mm. yeah, mm. yeah, mm. 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 kind of. <laughs> yeah, because I remember when I went to free art school, I was like, they were always talking about Havainto perception. I was like, what is it? What What is Havainto? Like, what really is Havainto? What is what you perception yeah you are you are saying this like without words from perception and then i remember when i was studying drawing it was mm -hmm. all about observe observe yeah L learn yeah. to see but it, which is mm. which is in its core the same thing yeah just explain differently yeah, yeah. yes follow the form mm. type mm. of thing mm. bit yeah, but then then maybe yeah well my personal opinion would be like like perception could this uh, this could be totally wrong but i think i would include more things to perception than to observing i'm not sure this could be also a terminology thing in english what would you include also maybe i would i would include those the maybe your feelings or you know like maybe more about Feel, no, well, I'm not sure if it's feelings or the environment, the you know, like this, like the the, the the thing that everything, like nothing is really like stable. Maybe uh, like there is more. How do so I say? So if you're drawing something mm -hmm. or painting it, mm -hmm. and there is uh, somebody in the other room cooking a very mm -hmm. delicious fish, mm -hmm. would you draw it or paint your object differently? than if there was no chef in the other room and you couldn't smell? It could be. It could be, yeah. Huh. I mean, at least in my case, because I, I feel that mm. like I, I, I work very like through body and, uh, and, and what, what I feel like, or what I sense. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Sensations. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. yeah. Mm. Makes sense. <laughs> As much as it does. <laughs> as much as it mm. does, yes. Did you have this environmental angle to your work always mm. or did it come at some point? Mm, it came 2017, 16 when I, when I was like with my works and working with MDF, these painting boards and, and, uh, and, and these, all these poisons. And uh, I was really tired of using them, and and of course with children you have to be careful that you don't. I mean, you you need to be careful with the air, and and uh, of course. Mm. But otherwise, also I think I love animals and I love nature, so it has been always there. But then there have been moments when I've realized I've gone to places like to visit some some artists, and they have this huge huge storage, and I'm like. Oh my god yeah of course i mean i've been pretty lucky to sell quite many paintings of those old old paintings but and people do sell but it's uh like why these all these objects i mean it's a valid concern obviously mm, because mm. things tend to pile up yeah yeah pretty quickly yeah and of course it's uh so i make this kind of works that that change in the environment and 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 they don't don't like pollute but of course there there are like materials that are good in their duration and in a way also fabric is such compared to paper mm. Mm. like fabric is really durable yes yeah i'm confusing you again <laughs> no no i was just thinking because uh, Somehow, I, I don't know, maybe because I never studied painting. Mm. I have this thing against fabric <laughs> as yeah, a yeah, material. Yeah, of course, yes, I understand. Just, yeah. just the, somehow, maybe just the physicality yeah, the, of yeah, the fabric. The it's thickness, very, the coarseness, or... I understand Yeah, there is something about well. fabric yeah. that I... Yeah, I understand it. To. That's why I use that kind of very thin, thin mm. because I hate, like, I don't like cotton, or I don't... 
I don't like uh, linen because it's like it it's so linen, linen is especially so yeah, rough. I mean, so I mean, horrible. So I loved MDF. This like yeah, like mm, flat board, flat board, and you can you paint on it, and it it like run the paint paint runs, and it's it's really it takes everything. But then you know, well, like with uh, <laughs> with linen, it's like yeah. Yeah, of course. I, in mm. The first thing you think about is the classical way to paint on, on this mm. thick canvas mm -hmm. that has this mm. grain and then mm. mm. you can paint on mm. whatever, of course. Mm. You mentioned partly already that you're able to sell many of your paintings. Congratulations. That's Thank you. Amazing. Some, yes. Honestly. Not, not yet. Um, <laughs> how do you sustain your practice otherwise? Um, yes, uh, I do some side jobs and I've been lucky to have some uh, uh, grants and uh, yeah it's hard but yeah. somehow balance somehow yes balancing yes okay mm. what kind of side jobs have you had <sighs> well I've been helping out people with uh, like yeah like taking care of people and yeah yeah it's uh you, you mentioned before we started this recording about the connections between mm. people. So it's, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. there. It's yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. Generally? Yes. I forgot what I was going to say. Good. <laughs> Your turn. Because Good. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, um, okay. Thinking about these connections, do you involve other people in your work? Your mm. friends or colleagues or mm. family? Mm. You mean in the process of making it? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I talk with people. Yes. That, you talk with them, that's how you do it? Yeah, mm, I talk with them, I show them and I talk and, and I ask them and, and I kind of share things a lot because I somehow feel that when someone else shares with me, I think I, you know, I want to share because I also know that if I share, I get more. Mm. I mean, somehow the yeah, I mean, the yeah, thing develops. Yeah, yeah, things develop, and mm. there is always more points of view, and and then there is this uh, group you work with, or Subaru Sisters. Subaru yeah. Sisters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Miri Mari Vaurinen, she studies in, in the doctoral studies in uni arts. So she wanted to make this recreational painting club or, you know, like, not club, but, you know, like, mm. so we made um, uh, an exhibition in, in together at uni arts and uh, kind of we made the exhibition so that we would learn to know each other. Which is kind of that connection yes. element. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes, very much. Yes. And uh, otherwise, how would I involve? Yes, I, I been part of Huto Artists since 2018. Okay. And uh, and then at HEAP and... Are you still working with the Subaru Sisters? Yes, we will go on. Yes, we will. How did that name come to be, Subaru Sisters? It's a, it's a, I, I don't know. Linda Rochier was was one of those. Uh, I mean, it came from her first uh, Subaru. She thought. has a Subaru car, or <laughs> it it comes from stars. There's uh, like seven seven stars. This okay. there's uh, like a Subaru, uh, if I remember it right. So it's like this kind of um, seven seven stars. Yes, exactly. Mm. Yes. Okay. Oh, I didn't and know. it somehow means maybe unity or something with Subaru. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Subaru sisters. <laughs> now I understand why the logo of the car brand is like that. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I think there it was also there, there with the stars. stars. Mm. Yeah. Everything makes sense. Just mm. you have to know yeah. some pieces of information. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I think it's so kind of funny and like sisters and I think this kind of sisterhood is very much needed. 
I, isn't it a thing, especially lately, this sisterhood mm. topic in mm. the arts mm. and mm. women artists yeah. gathering together? Yeah. yeah, it's about time. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's really needed. Yeah, like when I graduated from high school, I don't think I would have made. I couldn't have done it. Uh, like in painting, I couldn't have worked with that in that environment because it, the painters were men, and uh, mm. yeah. And I think now it's a good time to kind of uh, in my life to deal with these femininity things and like more feminine stuff and be, be who one is. But you kept working even though the, that was the environment. Well, I didn't. I well, I didn't pursue like painting career straight away after after high school. So, mm. ah, you mean in that? In yeah, those years? yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. That uh, like long ago. But I was still, you know, like finding my way. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it's not always a straight line, the path yeah, of a person. Yeah. What rarely is actually, I think. Yeah, and I think it has, it does have a value that one has seen quite much in life. If we bring the social element, this mm -hmm. kind of a connecting with others mm -hmm. to the to the social media, do you use it for somehow for your... I use it very much. I use it like really a lot, I, I Instagram. And but but I was thinking like, why do I use it so much? It's also <laughs> it's because I was able to delete all the delete all the pictures from my web pages so <laughs> so I started to put my works in Instagram and then making these you know for applications but did you do it on purpose or what happened no no accidentally <laughs> <laughs> accidentally I was like okay someone who knows how to do it could have connected them but then I said okay I make oh. new web pages <laughs> huh that's a uh interesting approach to, yeah, to it yeah, yeah. and that's why I have like two Instagram pages so I kind of I was gonna ask yeah, you about yeah, that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like uh, Brahms Anna is like my kind of personal but I've taken away the very personal things from there but then I wanted to have the nomadic art like kind of start all over again so do you manage to really pay attention to both accounts yeah it's easy yeah it's easy is it? You can post like at the same time, the same image and the text there. There is a, mm. a system. But yeah. So you post the same things. Why do you have two accounts then if you post the same thing? Yeah, I do, I, I do it. I have this um, Anna, uh, Brahms Anna because most of the, um, I mean, where I applied money from, for example, they know only that address, so with the time I'll... Mm. Mm. So you want to move towards the nomadic art yeah. more? So do you have some <coughs> specific routines that you do when you start working? When you yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, when I come to a workspace, I have certain things have to be like, yeah, yeah. I think it's more like um, being in a space, I need to be very like in a certain way and I might do yoga or meditation or and then then start working. But I somehow I think I'm working kind of all the time and I kind of collect things from everywhere, uh, like impressions and thoughts. I mean, that's the case of every artist, I suppose. And uh, but I think that I work kind of all, all the time. And uh, and like I said, this is more like a, this is more like a studio with a home than home with a studio. So I like <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, 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 it seems like it might become overwhelming to just be in your studio all the yes, time. Yes, yes, absolutely. No, no. Yeah, yeah. And then I uh, yeah. At least, at least you have the room so you can close yeah. the door. Yeah, I can close the door. Uh, yes, I can close the door. And uh, Have you had before some studio which is not in your own yes, space? Yes, I had. Yeah, in HIAP I was for one year. And then I have, uh, even now I have a studio in um, um, 
Mary Thorne, but I sub supplied it. Yes. Is it the right Mary one? Thorne, yeah. Yeah. It's the Grey Gardens community? Mm. Or it's, yeah, it's, it's, on, it's not in the community, but I know many people from there. But yeah. I have the on the second floor in the in the in the in the taller building. Yes, in the tall building. It's really cute. It's really there like, are many people there. I yeah. think also outside of Great Gardens mm. that have. I mean, it's a giant building, of course. Yeah, and it's amazing what they've done. This you know, like um, exhibitions downstairs in the gara in the garage, and there there was some happening there. Oh. I, I I'm so excited about that kind of stuff. That you know, like people enter places and take them as their own and see beauty in everywhere i didn't know about that yeah Oops. do they do it like occasionally or was it just one i one just thing? noticed my friend um Aino Lintunen, if i understood it correctly was part of maybe i mixed mixed up sorry i know but you do work, great work but someone else at least put there because she i, I know has my studio now in uh, and before before Meritorni, I was in where was I? I was in Ruoholahti, and then I was in Juniors, and then before that, well, many all the time on the move, nomadic art. Yeah, yes. I noticed myself that I have been moving almost once a year. Yes, <laughs> it's so. I don't know what it is. I know I know people who find a room and stay there for like. Yes, and almost yes. ten years or something. Yeah, but, yeah. it has a value for sure. But uh, I like this thing, even though, even though I have a, I have a storage, and this room is full of stuff. I would love to have this kind of light way of living. More minimalist. Yeah. And what would be my routine too? Um, well, my routine would be probably that that there are not many routines, but there are just some like I have to have this kind of certain mindset that mm. so I can well I can work anywhere when I get that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. So in that sense, you could say that an artist doesn't really need a studio. Not necessarily. Just yeah, some space. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> before everything, the mental space. Like this, you know. Mm. Mm. But maybe we can talk about this one since we're in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, how big is it? I think it's about 30 square meters. Is it? Am I exaggerating? I feel like it might be even more. Yeah, okay. it, it could be. be. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. It's very spacious. It's re and it's uh, I love the high ceiling at here up there was also a high ceiling in my space and that's maybe the best I mean I don't need that much space but I need a high ceiling it's just high ceiling uplifting. really feels good yeah yeah, yeah. like how to make a budget budget um, boxes paint them white the banana boxes and then there are um, um, and of course now my my like I noticed like there on the mm, on the shelves there's like on the left there are like old things like old kind of working and then it's coming like to the new stuff and all the time more electronics and all the time like more electronics that is interesting yes. I didn't know you were yes doing now stuff I with yeah, electronics. yeah well I went to this lovely course at Anitaiten Seura last weekend Ah, and with I'm, Anna. Uh, uh, or who was it? Or Marco? Marco. Ah, their episodes. Ah, with he's both lovely. Of yeah, they're like, yeah, and it was such a good group. Like, I mean, that's another like kind of doing things together. What mm. an example! I mean, so beautiful sharing and like everyone gets inspired and no one is kind of holding back and it's like it's like a shared reality like mm. this kind of and. Um, do you know if they're doing them regularly? Or? I think they will do. I think, and we we asked for this kind of advanced course from this, like, like basics, but advanced. Yes, but I, Arduino. I think they, yes, yeah, they were. Yeah, Arduino. Yeah. So I bought this Arduino now, and I'm all ex I'm so excited about it because I because I've been doing this works with uh, 
with these skin-like paintings, I add to them this kind of uh, very fragile uh, metal metal things, and so, and I made them with a, with a contact uh, mic, uh, not what is it called? No, oh, I lost it. But anyway, I made them shake those mm. those vibration work. models. Yes, yes, yes. They are this. <laughs> Well, it comes. Sorry, audience. Um, uh, so I'm really into making my works more interactive. Like, for example, in the corner there is this long tube. There's that one when I was in Hiap. <coughs> I put it uh, because it's I'm environmentally friendly. I put it underwater in five separate days, and I was filming it underwater. And then there was the sound. Yeah. So I, uh, from that moving image, I took the sound and put it to that um, contact loudspeaker or exciter, whatever it is. So then the, the movement created the sound and then the sound creates movement. So that's my mm. movement, sound movement. I use works again. Mm. Yeah, I, I've I've used Arduino's in some light-related works. Uh, I'm I, not that great with sound, I have to admit. Yeah, I'm, me neither. I just make noise. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I kind of, I get excited about like very random noises. Like not that much about. Yeah, I love music, but not that much. Like, I mean, it has it has to be somehow everyday sound. Yeah, and Arduino's you can reuse for different projects as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So that's... Mm. I remember when I was in free art school, I was telling to one lecturer that I would really like to go inside that painting. I was like, I want to go. And, and then the teacher was like, yeah, but Anna, you are here. Ooh. And then I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm here. But then I was like, when I was doing the all these things and making this like multiple projections I was like okay I am here I'm inside the painting because my language is for painting so even mm. if I use something else it's I still call it painting related yeah where is the edge of painting mm. in that sense mm. where does painting end and mm. something else begin mm. I think I think for me it stays always Everything a painting, painting, yeah, and like oh, in arts, I get excited about mm, performance art, but I see it as a painter because I, I see I, I kind of read those thoughts behind them as a painter. Yeah, like mm. okay, I can I can relate to that that idea, and I can yeah. Hmm. So your painter identity is very strong. Mm, yeah, yeah, but I, yeah, I love, I love uh, performance art. I really. Have you done any performance? No, 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 <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no uh, I think I'm too shy for it. But I think in a way, like open studios. But I'm, I think I'm going to do that kind of stuff too. That like very normal doing as a performance. Mm. I haven't done any performance mm. myself and, and I don't see myself how I would ever do that. Mm. Mm. But there are people who are super good at it, mm. of course. Um, do you often visit exhibitions? I do, I do, but not enough. Yeah. Uh, what is enough? <laughs> yeah, what is enough? Mm. Yeah, I always, when I see someone, someone going to exhibitions and I'm like, Thank you, thank you, thank you that I've seen at, at least something because I couldn't make it this time. But I, I, I do go and, uh, but not enough, yeah. Where do you usually go? Are there some specific places you um, go? Or? Mm, I like exhibitions at Sinne and then I like Oksasenkatu exhibitions. I mean, mo I mean in general. Mm. And then I go to Anhava Contemporary uh sick i went but not to the first one not to the new one i haven't been there yet sorry sorry i should have gone and uh where else 
and open studios I go and of course if a friend has a exhibition and and then I go to Kiasma and uh, when my friends come from abroad I go to Ateneum with them and uh, uh, yeah Kiasma and uh, and Emma I go to and I went to and I, Emma is so nice but it's so far it's so also. far yeah yeah they really do great job with mm, the yeah. program mm. Yeah, artsy. I haven't been to that one. Yeah, it's ever. nice. It's, it's a, I, I went once. Uh, in, there was this uh, home exhibition. There were some of my friends were there. I think it was really cute because it was so small. The space. There was something really intimate about it. Homey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are some artists that you follow their work or get inspired mm. by? Kathy Wilkes. Kathy Wilkes. She's. Yeah, I, I love her. Do you know Kathy Wilkes? I will soon. Yeah, okay, <laughs> great. She was in Venice in 2019 and she had those. She has this language of uh, somehow this kind of uh, um, lang beautiful language of uh, um, melancholy. And she has really beautiful things she has worked on. And then Philida Barlow, who is, um, mm, was a sculptor. Vivian Souter, Swiss-Argentinian artist. Oh, I would need Think that in yeah. writing. <laughs> yes, I will give you. And then uh, Li Hufan uh, and uh, Monoha, and then Nina Canel. She says that sculpture can be anything, and that's very inspiring. Pippi Lotrist, and then of course Nina Roos from Finland, and I mean many colleagues, and uh, mm, yeah, and more and more I would like to learn about like like Far East, Far East female artists. Mm. Mm, yeah. In my very old, like, second episode of this podcast, uh, my guest was Alison Wicklund. Okay. Who has been this traveling aficionado, uh, enthusiast, artist, who has, is always going somewhere. She, uh, she has been a lot to the Far East. Okay. She works with uh, painting as well and, and yeah. inks a lot. Yeah. That might be interesting to you too. I, I will. I will. Although she, her. I don't, I don't know if she mentioned specifically female yeah. artists, but yeah, the Far East is yeah. something that I connect with her. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I really want to go there. I, I applied for a, for a residence in in South Korea, but unfortunately I didn't get. Right. Yeah. You have to apply again. I will. I will apply. Rejection will is an well, everyday yeah, yes, uh, yes, exercise. I'm so <laughs> used to it. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's a choice. I mean, yeah, yeah Far East, I would like to go. Mm. What other places are inspiring for you? Islands. Like, I would like to go to uh, Iceland. Fa fa how do you say the Faroe? Uh, uh, oh, in English, how do you yeah, pronounce it? Uh, Faroe. Yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't know. Yeah. That. Yeah, that. <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I would like to go to Japan. I haven't been there yet. Mm. Mm. Mm, yeah, I think yeah, islands. Yeah, all the world is an island, actually. I mean, <laughs> I mean, well, technically in the city, yeah, in the city. And Australia, I would like to go, of course. Yeah, Australia is one place yeah. I would really love to yeah. go. Also, yeah. Yeah. It's just so far away. It's very far. Yeah. I, I recently met somebody from Australia and they said that it was... It could be a 40 hour flight yes. to get there. Yeah. yeah, It's pretty insane yeah. amount of time. All right. Well, I think that's pretty much it. I don't have any more questions in my list. Really? <laughs> yeah. I hope I was... Un I mean, people understood me or... I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah, let's see, yeah. 
thank you for this talk and good luck with the exhibition in Lapin Lahti. Yeah, thank you. A few months thank from you. now. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Leda, for coming. It was really nice. It's been yeah. very nice.